humans lose muscle at about a rate of 5% per decade after the age of 30. Now that's an average and it may start off steady, but as we get older that rate increases. As a result it turns out the amount of muscle strength that someone has is actually a pretty decent indicator for how long they're going to live, particularly when we look at the strength of older people. So we're going to split this video into three parts. First of all we're going to look at the actual evidence around muscle strength and longevity. We're then going to look at some of the potential factors that might be behind this relationship. And finally what can we learn from this science to implement into our our own lives. So first off let's look at the evidence. Now it's important to mention at this point that most of our evidence around muscle strength and longevity comes from what we call observational research. Now observational research is as the name suggests you are observing a population or a group of people without actually changing anything yourself so you're basically just looking at natural associations that are found in that group of people. So this first study measured the grip strength of over a thousand men in the US and this was part of a, a long-term healthy aging study that they were doing so they continued to then track these men over a 25 year period. So you might say well grip strength isn't the same as measuring a back squat warm rep max or bench press, you know it's not real strength, but actually when we look at the population as a whole, grip strength actually correlates really well with whole body strength. Now I actually have a grip strength dynamometer here, this is typically what they would use in these studies, so you can see how using this to measure strength of thousands of people is much more practical than getting them into a gym and doing a warm rep max test. But for the sake of interpreting this research, we just have to understand that actually grip strength is a pretty good measure of, of total body strength. Now over the 25 years or as long as participants were alive, they had them come back in every year or so to repeat those grip strength tests. Researchers were looking through death databases, they were conducting follow-up phone calls with participants and their family members, and if any participants had passed away, they would make note of that. So what did this study find? Well, they split their results in men that are over 60 and men that are under 60. So I'm going to focus on the latter because I think that's more reflective of probably the audience watching this video. So for men under 60 years of age, for every one kilogram greater their grip strength was, the researchers found a 0.9% reduction in their risk of overall death. Interestingly though, during these time periods that they were repeatedly measuring grip strength from these participants, if someone's grip strength got worse between any two time points, they had a 75% increased risk of dying from any cause. So in this group of men, a greater grip strength was associated with a lower risk of dying, and if your grip strength got worse, this was really bad news. Now in this analysis, the research Researchers factored in things like age and BMI, so essentially took those out of the equation and found that strength still had those associations with longevity. And there's another landmark study in this area. This study started in 1965 and looked at 6,000 healthy men in Hawaii. The studies tracked these men for 30 years from around their midlife to older years. And again, researchers collected data on death. So they sifted through obituaries, death certificates, the National Death Index. So basically they knew exactly when one of the participants had died. So what did they find? Well, interestingly, even after factoring in someone's age, their education background, occupation, smoking status, physical activity level, the men with the lowest grip strength had a 24% greater risk of death from any cause than the men with the highest grip strength. Although these are just two studies, we have many more examples where there seems to be a pretty clear relationship between muscle strength and longevity, but why could this be? Which brings me on to the second part of this video where we're gonna cover some of the leading candidates. The first one being metabolic health. Now, as many of us will know, there isn't a perfect correlation between muscle mass and strength, but they are absolutely linked. And in general, it is very healthy to have a high muscle to fat ratio, meaning you are carrying more muscle than the average person and, and less fat. So if you're showing a high degree of strength relative to your body weight, it probably indicates that first of all you probably have a good amount of muscle and second that the muscle you have is of good quality and again muscle mass as a tissue is a healthy tissue to carry to a certain extent we store glycogen in our muscles to use for energy and having a high amount of good quality muscle means that we're able to use and store glucose more efficiently it'll also give you a greater energy expenditure through slightly increased metabolic rate which may contribute to better body composition i.e lower levels of excess body fat and lower excess body fat is good for a reduction in a whole load of disease risks we're talking heart disease very various cancers, diabetes. So overall, with muscle being a generally a metabolically healthy tissue to carry, it's probably going to have a knock-on effect to our risk of various other diseases. The second potential factor why strength is important for longevity is neuromuscular efficiency, aka how much of the muscle you have are you able to recruit and how fast are you able to recruit it to produce force. The more force that you're able to exert per given amount of muscle that you have generally indicates good muscle quality and efficient neuromuscular networks. Now this is an important factor when it comes to daily physical 
difficult tasks, especially as we get older because it can help to avoid things like falling, which can then lead to complications like fractures, bleeds, further inactivity that later down the road might eventually lead to other diseases. Having a good degree of neuromuscular efficiency is likely going to have a positive effect on your physical function in general and make it less likely that when you're older you're going to fall over because you're able to balance and correct yourself during movements. But enough of the science side of it, what can we learn from these findings? Now I don't want to get ahead of myself here, but from what we know about muscle building and creating these neuromuscular connections, I think you'd be silly not to try and maximize that whilst you can in your 20s and 30s, and then particularly as you get older, work really hard to maintain that. And by work hard, of course, I mean strength training in the gym, because that's the one thing that is going to, unsurprisingly, increase your muscle strength. Now you might think that this means you have to work out four or five times a week strength training to get these benefits, but honestly, you would be surprised. When it comes to maintaining your strength as you get older, you can do this with a surprisingly low amount of volume. We're talking probably two days a week of whole body strength training, and maybe even one day if that training is intense enough. Now, if you're past your 20s into your 30s and 40s, there is some good news, especially if you don't think you have a lot of muscle strength at the moment, because again, building muscle strength isn't the same as building muscle mass. In fact, it's a lot easier. And that's because it relies a lot on establishing various neural connections and movement patterns, which you can absolutely build at any age. So do the sort of strength training that you enjoy, but a massive take home point from this video is if you want to get the benefits, you do need to be trying to at least maintain or gain strength. And that means actively progressing with your repetitions, your sets, but most importantly, over time, the weight that you're lifting. Thank you for watching. As always, everyone, I hope you've got something useful from this video. Do hit subscribe if you like this sort of content, and I will see you soon in another video.